Heinz Thiel here, reporting from Dixon, Illinois, at World War II Recreated. Let's go on over to some of the Allied troops and equipment. Well, let's introduce you to a little bit of our American armored vehicles. Chuck, could you tell us a little about this vehicle? Uh, yes, this is a 1943 Locust Light tank made by Marmon Harrington in Indianapolis. It uh, is one of only 800 that were ever made, and there are only about 30, 40 survived yet in the world. There's only about five of them running in the world, so this is a pretty rare one also. It has a 37 millimeter cannon up front and a coaxial machine gun on the right hand side. The tank driver is shown here. He has a tank helmet and he sits essentially on the floor. The gunner and commander are up here in the tank hatch itself. This uh, tank will do about 30 miles an hour and it has metal track on it and uh, it uh, was designed to be brought in by a glider and was used in crossing the Rhine in operational varsity. Thank you, Chuck. I'd also like to mention Chuck has his own museum in Rochelle. It's called Roberts Armory. Uh, Chuck Roberts, and I'm the curator of Roberts Armory World War II Museum. And if you ever have a chance, it's a really interesting place to visit and see these things up close. The purpose of the museum is to preserve uh, armor from the World War II era, mostly light armor and light armored vehicles from the U.S. Army during World War II. This is a 1943 Locust light tank designed for airborne operations. Loaded on gliders. Yeah, right? they did. The Hamlet car. See the big one? Yeah. The big there. One. And they landed about seven or eight of them. Uh, a couple of them got hit immediately, but one of them just about wiped out a German infantry unit because they didn't expect tanks that far in. They didn't have anti-tank weapons with them. And really? So, and so that was the purpose yeah, of the it. Days in the hole. Yeah. yeah. This is a very rare tank. There's only about 30 to 40 of them left in the world. So we made the turret and the cannon, the 37, and it, uh, it was really beat up, but at least we had the hull and the tracks together. This has uh, been restored to a early version type turret uh, and also an early version type driver's hatch. Where, where did you plant this? This was in a farmer's field. These were made in Indianapolis and then they were given to farmers after the war for as skid loaders and stuff like that. And then we have the 30 caliber coaxial gun on the side and that is uh, a typical Iraq type uh, machine gun. Over here we see the tracks, the track system. Very rare, so uh, it's dry pin suspension. So this one has, as you can see, the dry pin suspension. That's why we keep it very loose, which means you run it sloppy, so it doesn't rear the pins out. That's why you'll see them sagging quite a bit. And so we let them sag as much as we can, and then tighten them up a little bit. If you tighten this too much, it wears like mad, and you're going to have no drag on So these were designed to always go very loose. Have you noticed the tiger tanks are like that? Yes. Very floppy. Floppy. Just enough to get it back, because if you do it too tight, the dirt gets in there, and, and you wear out these pins. The road wheels here, often called bogies, are uh, uh, remanufactured by the Tennessee Wheel Company. They cast these wheels in polyurethane, which worked out real well, and they don't get chewed up at all. And this is the track adjuster here that you adjust the tracks up with. And then in the back, we see the bustle, and this is the engine compartment. And the engine that originally went in here, we have taken out, and it's used as a display, but we use a steward engine in here right now because the parts are readily available, and we have extra cooling on it, like this little clear rack, so. Only this trouble would, is if you're if you're behind the tank like this, please don't let the cartridges get in there. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh yeah. I end up with about 20 blanks in the hull, you know, at the end of a battle, and I hear them go cling, 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 cling. Because we often have guys going like this, you know, yeah. behind the tank. And of course the muzzle is right next yeah, to I'm my ear. Yeah, I'll tell you something. I was you in <laughs> I was in Chubb's armored car one time, and guys were firing right next to it. Uh -huh. It sounds like someone hitting a hammer again. Yes, oh, yeah.
newest addition to the Roberts Armory is an actual World War II Higgins bow, which is one of those flat bottom landing craft used in Normandy and many other amphibious systems.